Hi, Kevin with Forever Green Indoors, continuing our series on choosing grow lights. In today's segment, let's talk about how grow lights work, but in order to do that, we have to compare them to the sun. Our sun is a massive thermonuclear reactor, 100 million miles away. And through a process called nuclear fusion, the sun sprays out photons, which arrive on the earth in the form of ultraviolet, light and infrared energy and is the basic foundation for all life on earth. Plant life through a complex process called photosynthesis convert that light energy to sugar and those sugars are what allows plants to grow and thrive. But without light none of this would be possible. And now we're gonna step back inside our distribution center and test garden to finish the rest of the segment. So now with a basic understanding of our sun, how it creates energy that's converted into photosynthesis by plants, we can then start looking at grow lights, deciding what kind of plant we want to grow and what kind of light level it requires by just simply comparing areas on earth where these plants grow naturally and then creating the same amount of light with an appropriate grow light. Once we know what kind of plant we want to grow, we can compare it to where it exists on Earth and take a look at the photosynthetic energy that it receives throughout the day with an instrument called a PAR meter. PAR meters are an essential tool because they have the ability to measure quantum energy. And what that means is that different wavelengths of light coming from the sun arrive on the earth at different speeds. And so a complicated equation needs to be created in these devices to interpret the photosynthetic energy correctly. You can't measure photosynthetic energy without an actual quantum PAR meter. And the sun outputs so much photosynthetic energy that where you measure it doesn't matter. It does not drop off over distance, but grow lights do. One of the questions that we get asked pretty frequently is, do you really need to buy a grow light? And the simple answer is no. Almost any light will put out some level of photosynthetic energy. The problem is most off the shelf lights at your local hardware store are not gonna put out enough light intensity over a large enough area to grow certain plant types healthy. And another problem with off the shelf lighting is although it might be able to grow a plant, a lot of those lights are really not designed to last any length of time. I know that I've bought lights that I've installed in my home and have had to replace them within about a year. Whereas most grow lights on the market are gonna carry a warranty of three to five years and they're supposed to be operating between 12 and 20 hours a day. So they really are designed different. And the final reason you might want to choose an actual grow light versus just a standard light is that grow light manufacturers, if they're decent, supply what's called a PAR chart. That's photosynthetic active radiation that's being created at a certain distance. Usually that will be shown at 12 inches, 24 inches, or 36 inches, and that's exactly how much photosynthetic energy you can expect to receive on your plant, even if you don't have a PAR meter. Let's talk about spectrum. When you hear the word spectrum, what we're talking about is the colors of energy that sunlight produces. We have the ability to measure spectrum from the sun or from grow lights with this device called the passport. This is the spectrum of the sun. As you can see, it has all the colors that are produced by the photons arriving from our sun. This is the FGI spectrum, which we've designed to replicate as much of the sun's energy as possible cost effectively. So the decision on which light to buy comes down to a lot of factors. And one of them will be the type of plant that you select. If you're gonna grow a high energy use plant like these that like to flower, they like long days and high light intensity, you're gonna install more watts. 
If you're gonna grow leafy greens or plants that prefer lower light energy, you can buy a grow light that uses fewer watts, or you can also use a controller to dim them down to a lower light percentages so you get the best of both worlds. You don't want to underlight your garden, but you also don't want to overlight your garden, so you need some level of control. Here's an example of a lighting controller that we supply with our FGI Square 3 Wi-Fi units. This unit has push button dimming, so if we have low light plants, we can just dim it down to as little as 20%. If we have very high light usage plants, we can bring it all the way up to 100%. We can also pair this to our phone, which gives us an incredible amount of control over timers as well. So we can turn the lights on and off to make sure that we provide the light that the plants prefer all the time. These FGI Square 3 Wi-Fi units are one of my very favorite grow lights that we offer. In this particular area of our test garden, we have six of them set up and we have the Wi-Fi controller set up so that we can actually mimic sunrise, sunset, and they come on and off at different times to simulate clouds as we provide the plants water. So we're really trying to create the most natural environment we can to create the healthiest plants. And really in this case, what's turning into a beautiful garden here in our office in the winter. Thanks for tuning into this segment of How Grow Lights Work. We'll talk to you next time.